There is a lot of honesty in your lyrics, but that, that honesty has been with you through your career. Never, I don't know how to... There was one album that I did, and I tried, and I think I failed miserably, but um, when I was, um, I did a pop album, it was at a time where the industry was not supporting women in rock, and I was told, you know, write a pop record, and by the label that I was on, you know, and explained why, and I like, it sounded good, but I was like, I hate pop, you know, and, and, and um, so I thought, all right, I'll use this as a challenge to try and write a credible pop record. And I think that, that it was good for what it was, you know, and, and in comparison to the things I was hearing and I, you know, sort of injected some darkness, although everybody was trying to rub it out, you know, constantly polish out the edge. I was constantly being told, it's too edgy, it's too edgy. And I was like, damn, like, what do people talk about in this? You know, so, but then... At the very like last inning stretch, somebody got a great idea to cover this Turkish song. I don't even want to talk about this, <laughs> but um, it was it was really syrupy and just everything like that I had like been against, you know, and just repelled, you know, or repulsed by, you know, and, and then I found myself having to do that, and I was like, wow, don't ever say you're not going to do something, you would never do that, because you always wind up doing it, you know, at some point, so that, and, and it was like the most successful record, and I was pissed, because I was like, I don't want to be known for that, I don't want people to, I was embarrassed by it, you know, so, yeah. and, um, but, you know, it was good, because, um, because somebody else covered the song and they had greater success, so then they've been they've turned into the ones that did that song, right, yeah. <laughs> and not me. Yeah. <laughs> so. Your career has spanned a lot of different trends. You know, you started out when the whole girl thing was starting to happen and in sync and all that. I mean, you were kind of really starting to get your feet underneath you at that time, and you've gone through. You've seen the industry change. How has that industry changing affected you? I mean. You've survived. You're you're on the other side and and doing your thing. Well, you know, I kind of feel sorry. This is so strange that I'm gonna say this, but I feel sorry for people that work in the industry, which is how they've just, you know, just how hard it is for them too. You know, they're not the big bad record companies anymore. They're the suffering, trying to get through it. Don't know how to do it. There's a whole new model to the music industry, and it's like all about you know the information age and world domination through you know the internet and things like that. And and um, it's hard to be uh, creative, you know, anymore. But when I was younger, I mean, when I was first starting out. I was like a marketing whiz, you know, like how to market myself, how to, you know, and, and the things I was doing, um, you know, I didn't have access. We didn't, the internet wasn't really a thing yet. We haven't figured out how to use that as a promotional tool. Nobody had expected that to take over the industry, I think. And, um, you know, so I was, I could be like, I got a lot more done guerrilla style and it's it's really hard to do that kind of marketing this kind of marketing campaigns now because um you don't have to get out of your house or leave the computer you know what i mean you don't even have to be a good musician anymore yeah totally but on the same token i think it's gotten way too big and people don't know how to find music except for like great bloggers or things like that you know and and like the things that like the you know the blogs that have, you know, the bloggers, like with serious, you know, satellite radio and stuff like that, that's a great way to find new music, you know, or something like that. And, and, um, but other, other than that, it's hard to weed through it all, you know, and, and to find great things. And, you know, so I think it's like, I think it's coming back around, the more conservative approach. Well, I mean, cons when I say conservative, I mean like as far as doing things on foot, you know, and breaking, you know, smaller markets at a time as opposed to, you know, huge you know world kind of thing and right. and I think that it's sort of a combination of both you know like um, it's going to be a combination of both now the sort of guerrilla mentality and the, the information you know age um, so yeah I mean I have seen it all like seen it all change and just it is totally different but I think it's coming back around the way it used to be you know how do you feel how do you think it you, how do you feel and how does it affect you when people give away their music for free? 
I think they should do whatever they want, you know? And I think people should have the option to do whatever they want to, you know? As a musician, you know, if they want to give the record away for free, cool, you know? And, and um, I love that, like, Radiohead did that and Nails did that. I mean, you know, it's, it's good to, like, I think it's good to give some of your things away for free. I always did it, you know, and, and it helps your career in the end. It does. People love you, you know? Eric and I were talking, and we were talking about that same question about giving it away for free. You know, he gave away his entire back catalog for free, everything up until the yeah. two Met Metropolis records. And he said he made more money by people donating, by people giving him money for the albums than he ever did being signed in 10 years. Yes, I absolutely think that that's a great thing, a very smart m move. You know, people appreciate that kind of thing and they'll support you in one way or another. Maybe they won't, maybe they won't make physical donations, but they'll come to your shows and they'll raise your ticket sales and they'll buy your merch, you know. So it all like, you know, want, you know it all like helps at the end plus like people don't really make money off of albums anymore so why you know why would you spend a lot of you know energy worrying about album sales I mean I could see like iTunes you know like kind of saying you know check out you know or is it selling on iTunes kind of thing but physical albums themselves are like you know di you know there's record companies don't really press a whole lot of them distribution is like in the toilet you know so um, yeah, give that away for free and then watch what happens to, you know, watch your pole star, you know, <laughs> you know, numbers go way up, yeah, you know, so. Is there anything that you would like to talk to, to, to tell people about, to get people to understand about perhaps Dirty Little Rabbits, Stella, you know, something that's on your mind, whether it be politics or anything like that, what do you want to say to people? Buy our goddamn album. <laughs> that's what I would like to say. Come to our goddamn shows, <laughs> you know, please. We're starving. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, I would say that first and foremost. <laughs> and uh, if we're talking about ego rises and being honest, <laughs> yeah. but um, and also, you know, um, do your thing. You know, Sean always signs his um, his autograph. You know, when people ask him, "Live your life," you know, and I'm like says it all right there you know live your life period <laughs> but um yeah like politics religion all that I like never like align myself with because I always just think you know that what if I change my mind you know and and then it's on film or camera or you know and and then I sound you know like Hypocritical. yeah and uh I just need you know I like to live my leave, leave my options out open I'm a woman I'm allowed to change my mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's about what I would say. Buy my record. <laughs> Good.